Hi, thanks for tuning in. I'm Ben Tolson, and today I'm going to be answering a question I got on Twitter from Maria. She asked, can you share recommendations on how to best store video files? Is there a best practice for storing, sharing, and backups? I have to give a disclaimer here and say that I'm not an expert on this topic. I've devoted way less time than I probably should uh, figuring out my own workflow and best practices. But in this video, I'm going to share what I do, some things that I'd like to be doing ideally, and then hopefully, if you have any thoughts or you want to say, no, you should not do it that way, or if you have some better ideas or some experience that you'd like to share, you can do that in the comments below. So let's get into it. I'm actually going to take us through seven different steps in my workflow. So I'm going to start with file storage. When I download the files from my camera, I try to do this every day. I put it into an external hard drive. It's just a, a regular spinning disk drive. Ideally, I'd like to have solid state drives in a RAID array. That would be much better for backups and stuff like that. But for now, I'm using the cheap option, which is getting external hard drives. You know, obviously the upside is they're much cheaper. The downside is they tend to fail a lot easier. And so you've got to be really careful to make sure if you're using disk drives, spinning disk drives, that you back up your files regularly. Now I want to talk about naming, and this is one of those do as I say, not as I do kind of things, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. What Ideally, what I'd like to be doing is every day when I download my footage, I want to put the filming date in the format where it's four-digit year, two-digit month, two-digit day. And so that organizes, just by having that numerical sequence, that organizes the file by date. And it's going to be the filming date, not the date that I'm actually downloading the files. So the filming date, the name of the client, and then the project title or type. So for example, um, if I was you know, filming some footage from today's date, it'd be 2019-05-27 North Carolina Air Museum. I actually did some filming in an air museum recently, so that was fun. So North Carolina Air Museum promotional video. That would go on my external hard drive. All of the footage would go in there, and then that'd be it. What ends up happening some of the time is I'm in a hurry and I really need to get rid of some files uh, from my card so that I can go out and get some more footage, and so I just dump it all, like all of it, from several different days into a single folder with the date that I'm actually doing it. So if it was today's date and I'm like, oh crap, I need to get all this footage off. Um, I would just put today's date, drop all the footage in there with the intention of going back later and doing the correct file process, which happens maybe like 35% of the time. When I create a new project in Premiere Pro, which is the program I use for video editing, I save the project into a folder on my local drive. And so I've got documents, clients, and then the client name, and then the project name. And so that's the, that's the folder structure. And then in that project folder, I save it as the, pro, the project title. After I import all of my videos into the project from the external drive, most of the time I will create proxies. And so that's a, that's a process where the computer is recreating a new version of that video file at a lower resolution so that it, it's a lot easier for your computer to render and edit. And then when it goes to do the final render, it uses the original footage instead of the proxy, but the proxy makes it to where you can edit a lot faster. I make proxies, those go also into the local folder instead of the, rather than the external. And then any other assets, graphics, whatever, I just put that all into the local client project folder for editing. So when it comes to backing up files, um, I, I do a local backup using Time Machine on my Mac, which just automatically every day creates a backup of all of the files. And then I also use Backblaze, which is a cloud-based subscription that automatically backs up everything to the cloud, and that's fantastic too. So I've got double backups, which is uh, gives me a lot of peace of mind. It's really great. Ideally, I'd like to have that RAID system in place where I've got you know, some of the disks devoted to storage and the other disks devoted to backup, and it's all just happening right there 
and then of course running my Backblaze so I've got the cloud backup also. When it comes to transferring files over the internet, if I need to get some pre-existing footage from a client, I'll usually use Dropbox for that and I'll just send a file request. I use that just because I've had a subscription to it and it works for me. Um, I'm sure there are more efficient ways to do large file transfers if you need to transfer a bunch of footage out or transfer a bunch of footage in. Of course, your internet speed has a lot to do with how long and tedious that can be. I've got pretty fast internet and so it's not a big deal. Um, so I use that whenever I want to send a file to a client. So let's say I finish a video and I want them to see the final draft. I'll upload that to YouTube and just set it as unlisted. And I'll usually put a disclaimer about how YouTube's compression can mess with the video quality a little bit, but that's not going to affect the final video. So I send them that link, and then once I get the final approval from them, I'll upload the video file to Dropbox and send them a Dropbox link so that they can download it and use it on their end. And then the final step, once the project is finished and I'm all done, uh, I'll actually go into the local client project folder where the proxies are and I will delete the proxy folder, just get rid of all of that because that's just extra video files that are sitting there that doesn't affect the external original copies that I have and so if I ever need to go back to that project, which 99% of the time I don't, but if I ever need to go back to it, I can always just create new proxies and it'll populate all of the edited footage I've got in there. I do like to keep the project file in case there are pieces or, or elements that I need to move over to a new project. One time I had a client who had some contact information that they needed to update for the video and so I was able to go into that project and quickly do that and send it back out to them. So. So that's, that's why I find it useful to hold on to those things, but not to just have the extra footage sitting there taking up disk space. And then if I go for more than a year without working with that client again, I will actually take the, the whole client folder and I'll move it into a client archive folder on an external hard drive so that it's no longer taking up local disk, disk space. And every once in a while, like I'll go back and I'll move one of those clients back over, but it's just kind of a way of keeping, you know, I, I I used to have it to where the client folder had like hundreds and I was maybe working with like 20 clients throughout the year that I would just need to keep in there. And so it just, it makes it a lot easier and manageable visually and it takes up less disk space. There you have it. Again, these are just the ways that I do it. and and not necessarily recommendations, but if you're just getting started out, maybe this is a good starting point for you. And again, if you have any thoughts or ideas or experience or knowledge that you wanna share on this specific topic, I'd love for you to leave a comment below, help out our fellow video people, and that's gonna do it. We'll see you next time.